Hey, hello friends, back out here playing on the Great Pumpkin, playing cars, I guess you could say, doing the vintage air installation, working on the AC compressor, brackets, pulley, and the compressor installation. I'm uh, gonna do a few things different than what uh, Vintage Air recommends to get the AC lines and heat core hoses inside the cabin or inside the passenger compartment. Uh, they want you to cut up the passenger side kick panel. It works, and they give you nice little templates and everything to make it happen. I just can't bring myself to cut that panel up. Now, if it was junk, maybe I'd feel differently. This car, they're in phenomenal shape. I like the functionality and I like the looks of it. So I've already done a few cars by not cutting up the kick panel, but this is the first one. You guys saw the previous video. We're gonna retain the factory heater box under the hood and make it look like it has a factory heater core. That's gonna take care of two of my hoses, get the hot water inside the dash. I still got to get the two AC lines, high and low side lines inside the passenger compartment. I'm hoping that, but I've got an idea here. I've done this on other cars. We're going to go through the vent here just below the windshield to get it in there. And just so you know what I'm talking about here, of course, here's your dash. Here's our cowling. There's a factory vent here just on the inside, as you can see right there in front of my finger. That goes all the way down inside the passenger compartment. If I get, you know, my hand right here, you can see my hand. So you can see clearly that goes inside the dash. Right? So we've already got the heater core hose that's hooked up in the factory location. I'm going to use the factory box. I need to get the AC lines in. What we're gonna do, there's this plate here that comes in the vintage air kit. Well, we're gonna free cycle some more, except for we're gonna put a hole here and a hole here and use their rubber grommets. Actually, I have those right here, put them in the kit. And we're gonna stab the hoses through that so it's sealed and tidy and looks nice. And these are parts that are already included in the kit. So that saves me a few bucks. And I'm all about saving a dollar or three. But this is how we're gonna get all four lines, hot and cold, inside the passenger compartment. And of course, one of the steps of making that happen is putting this AC compressor in. I need to get it mounted in its location. I've got the heater box mounted in its location. And with this kit, I got the AC lines where only one end was crimped on, extra long, so that we can route them from where the compressor is gonna reside, up here through the firewall, through the cowling, and to the heater box. And once we get our length and clocking figured out, I actually borrowed a little crimper thing. We're gonna crimp the hoses, but I'm not sure how much time we're gonna get in here today, but. Definitely first step is get this compressor installed. And in order to get all this to happen, this is the compressor bracket that came with the kit. It's a couple of bits and pieces. Here's the pulley. We gotta get this stuff installed. Um, but this stuff, just an FYI, comes bare steel when it comes in the kit. I went ahead and cleaned them up, painted them a satin black to kind of finish what we got going on with the original looking theme for the most part. But one thing you wanna keep in mind though, of course, this is gonna to mount to the cylinder head. Well, this car never had air conditioning. Something else you wanna look into doing is I actually tap these holes out and you can see a little bit of a rust stain. This one, this one, this one, and then this one here need to be cleaned out. Thread, chase, tap, whatever, because I'm gonna guarantee you 50 years of schmutz is in those holes and you're gonna have some trouble. You may damage the bolts, twist one off and have more trouble. So it's definitely worth a few extra moments to clean those holes out first. But I'm um, thinking what we're gonna jump into first is getting this pulley installed. So I gotta get down in here, pull the factory drive pulleys off there and put it here between the balancer and that pulley. And also an additional note, I never did tighten these belts up on this car, as you can tell, really loose, really sloppy. So if you've not done that yet, be one of the things you'll have to do is back off the alternator and the power steering if so equipped. And down here on the very bottom, what we have here is I've got the four bolts out of the balancer pulley. Let me climb down here and I'll show you what I've got. And if you look up here, one, two, three, and four are out of the way. So at this point, I can actually pull this pulley off of the crankshaft. You can see here, it's gonna come off. Then I can slide the pulley in and the belt without taking these all the way off. Let me show you how that's done. Now my hopes are just to kind of sneak that thing off, hook the belt between the two of them and go back together. I'm not sure how this is gonna go, but we're about to find out. Again, uh, set that thing on. Just pulled the pulley further forward and I can slide this in here behind. And the reason I'm doing it this way, I don't have to remove the other V-belts completely off the car to get this routed. So well, that's in place. And we'll do the same thing here with the pulley, I hope. Sneak it down in here. Oh, my transmission lines are gonna get in the way. I'll come in here from the driver's side. Well, if I was a smart guy, I would have put this pulley on while I had the engine apart, but I just didn't have the pulley yet. And I wanted to hear it run, and I wanted to see it go. There we go. Now, the trick's gonna be finding the bolt holes and putting that back on, but you get the idea. Now my belt's in there, and the pulley's in there, and I didn't have to take these ones off. 
Went ahead and snugged up the four attaching bolts for the balancer pulley. Belt's sitting ready to go there. Next thing up the bat is going to be this big compressor bracket. Now, it comes with tall spacers and short spacers. You don't need the tall ones, so you can just get rid of those. I'll confuse the heck out of you. Use the shorter ones. I'm not quite sure why they're in the kit. Same thing. Went ahead and clean these up, paint them to match the rest of everything under the here, paint it black. Now, there's going to be three mounting holes. We've already cleaned those up on the front of the cylinder head and one here into the head. This is why we clean the holes because, well, it makes putting this thing on a whole lot easier. We'll be one, two, and three. And as you can see, the longer bolt and the shorter bolt obviously goes down here in the bottom of this bracket. So we're going to get that thing all set up into place. And then we'll get the bolt snugged up. Okay, let's get this thing rolling here. The shorter bolt down here and the longer bolts in these spots here. And then we'll kind of put the little spacers in place. Stack one, two, and three. Now there's actually four bolts to hold this thing on here when it's all said and done. But we'll kind of lower this into place. And again, I like to try to be as careful as I can not to tear the paint up on this thing. Got some time wrapped up into that. And so here's the advantage of cleaning the, the holes out here. I can run these in by hand for the most part. Okay, and then should be the short, short, short bolt. And it goes in here, this direction, up into the cylinder head. And that's your main mounting bracket. Actually, that's nice. All those are started and I guess you'd say in the place. Now, next step is to be snug these things up and get them tightened down. Now, there's something I like to keep in mind here. When I'm tightening up my fasteners on freshly painted surfaces, I don't try to push a socket full depth against it and turn because it'll leave a circle around here on the metal in the paint. So I guess what I try to do is not push a socket completely against it and then snug it up. Um, I know it sounds kind of silly, but just those little details that kind of set the car apart again. Doesn't take that much longer. Again, just kind of hold the socket at the outer edge of the bolt. And it doesn't leave that little circle on your finish. One. This is German torque. And click, click. That's good and tight. All right. And this one. Now, next up is another compressor bracket. And here's this, oh, no call the beep, 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 beep. Hmm. All right, here we go. Here's that compressor bracket. Here's something I want you to keep in mind. Vintage Air wants you to mount it onto here next. There's the pivot bolt, it's threaded. You put the short one in there. And you're supposed to start this bolt while stabbing it through this, through this, and through this, all at the same time while holding it up and getting it started and not damage any of the paint. Well, I don't like that idea. I didn't want to do it that way. I know it sounds kind of small and minute, but mount this bracket to the compressor next and skipping, here's bolt one, skip number two and put bolt number three in. Do not install bolt number two. Let me show you why. But we are going to install, like I said, now the orientation you see here, here's your fittings for the pressure suction or discharge ports. So we're gonna go just to this side of it here. That's gonna be bolt number one. Gonna drop that bad boy into place. Now, the bolts that come in the kit, there's not that many, but you can see it just barely fits through. So, we'll get that nut started, hopefully, with one hand uh, holding. Oh, well, you get the idea. Ta -da. Now, again, we'll do the same thing. Skip number two. Put this one into place. Start a nut by hand. And that's prepped. Ready to go on. Let me show you why. Okay, here we go. This is the shortest bolt in the kit. Put the big old washer on the end of it. And that's going to go, once we're done, into this hole here. This hole is actually threaded. And this is what the adjustment bolt is going to be. You take this loose. That's what things going to like for the adjustment. It's going to pivot here once it's all said and done. But first things first, this is why bolt number two gets left off. I can take this compressor now, as you can see. I then can drop it into place and not damage any of the paint. Check this. Into place. And then I can put this bolt in. Like so. And then we'll take our pivot bolt, which is what I was calling bolt number two earlier. Stand that in there. And I didn't have to try to juggle everything into place. I didn't damage any of the paint. And as for a close up here, check this thing out here. Now the compressor is installed. Bolt number two is stabbed through. Like I said, we have our adjustment bolt there. And then it says it 
pokes through right here on the back. So I just got to stab a nut on that. I got one more bolt to put in here, put the nut on that, and then our compressor is basically installed. Okay, I went ahead and slapped the belt on the bad boy here, but look at something here. The belt, I mean, I shoot straight down the crankshaft. I have no deviation. Looks great. Nice alignment. But this is a 1968 front end drive. I've never actually installed a first gen F body 68 vintage air kit. I have done 1969 a couple of times as for the installation, but looking at this here, it's really close. I mean, you have, there's a gap. It's kind of hard to see, but trust me, there's a gap between them. Turn the light on. You can see the gap in there. So it, it's not touching the water pump pulley, but it is really close. So if you guys are running into that, let me know. I mean, it's going to work. It's going to clear, but man that's close but anyway you can see here also you'll start seeing some fittings here for our ac system lines i'm going to start working on getting that all plumbed up and together um and that's going to be a whole separate video i really feel because there's just way too much going on with that to cram all that in here today okay so that being said as you can see here next go around we're going to work on the plumbing for the great pumpkin ac line installation so we can not destroy the kick panel because i just don't want to I said that enough times as you get the point i'm not going to tear that thing up um, of course, you can see here down on the ground, we've got brand new Tyrees on this thing. It's actually still on the jack stands, but once you get the AC uh, installation completed, we're going to put this thing on the floor and start doing some body work. Yay! So we can do a springtime paint job. That's my hopes and dreams and wishes. Not even a year invested into this thing yet. Complete sheet metal overhaul, underbody, like new transmission, engine, suspension upgrades. A lot of stuff already completed in a very short amount of time because I only delegate a few hours a week to come out here and play cars with you guys. So, of course, you know, I got to make the best of that time because it's very limited. But as you can see, with my efficiency stuff here, that's the pumpkin, great pumpkin steering wheel. It's in primer. I work on that kind of in the background. Say I'm working on something up here, did some paint, did something, waiting for something to dry. Kind of like building a model car, I guess you could say. Some people build them step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't. I go step one, two, wait for glue to dry, jump to build the engine, wait for that glue to dry, paint, and then jump to the interior. Then eventually I get the whole thing assembled, basically using all my time up. I don't like to sit there and watch the paint and glue dry. I like to keep on doing the busy work. But with that also being said, I got another thing that's just happened. I quit my job. Yeah, you might think that's kind of crazy. I didn't just quit a job. I'm actually exiting one place, starting a new adventure. But that new adventure is going to be a whole lot of fun. Got a lot of neat things happening. You might see some changes in the old videos here, too, because of it. Mm, surprise, that's a little teaser. But we're also going to have more time to do this. I'm hoping that was one of the reasons I changed jobs. I can play more cars, get more done, share more videos with you guys. And then it hopes that maybe this thing keeps on growing and kind of starts to just take off and do its own thing, make more views videos whatever well, i'm just kind of ram it's kind of a dream and then we'll get back to work on the back in blackbird so anyway enough of all this get the camera get the crimper get these hoses built that's gonna be our next video and uh we'll see you guys then